The Starship is a monumental achievement in spacecraft engineering. It's not just its immense size and power that make it stand out, but also its innovative ground system, designed meticulously for assembly, launch, and recovery. This rocket has reignited global interest in space exploration, with people around the world tuning in to witness its launches. I'm sure we all remember how the world held its breath and watched the first launch of this rocket. No other rocket has been watched this closely, and it's not without reason. One anticipated feature of Starship's design is the spectacular recovery demonstration involving a catching mechanism nicknamed Mechazilla. This innovative technology is designed to catch the Starship booster, essentially the lower stage of the spacecraft, as it descends back to Earth. This catching mechanism is a departure from the traditional landing approach involving the use of landing legs, which SpaceX employs for the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. Traditionally, space companies have used a variety of landing approaches to recover spacecraft. The most common is a water landing, where spacecraft descend into the ocean and are later retrieved by ships. SpaceX revolutionized this with the development of autonomous spaceport drone ships that serve as a landing pad at sea, allowing for the recovery of boosters. SpaceX also developed the technology to enable boosters to return to the launch site or to a landing pad near it and land vertically, reducing the turnaround time and cost associated with launching rockets. The idea behind the development of Mechazilla is to further streamline the recovery process and minimize the wear and tear on the spacecraft by eliminating the need for a harsh landing. The catching arm system is meant to gently catch the spacecraft and the booster, mitigating the impact and thus preserving the integrity of the components. However, despite the benefits of the Mechazilla catching system and the anticipation of rocket enthusiasts and experts, it appears that SpaceX has decided to opt for a sea descent for the upcoming orbital launch of Starship. SpaceX's choice to have Starship land in the sea is a noteworthy change from their usual land recoveries. We all remember the stunning advancements they've made with the Falcon 9 rockets since 2015 and the gigantic Starship prototype landings in Starbase, Texas. SpaceX has always learned from its failures and made quick improvements. Just look at how they made an 80% improvement in just four months after Starship 24 exploded. This ability to bounce back has allowed them to prepare for another launch with Booster 9 and Ship 25 anticipated to travel over Indonesia and re-enter the Earth's atmosphere near Hawaii. The decision to land in the water is quite different from SpaceX's successful land recoveries. This decision is multifaceted. Keeping people safe is the top priority. The belly flop maneuver, a technique to control the descent landing, requires a sea landing to test the spacecraft's control and structure during descent and the intense forces during re-entry. Given this mission involves more complicated paths than the straight up and down ones of the first test flights, landing in the sea helps in avoiding any catastrophic outcomes, remembering the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster in 2003. Choosing to splash down near the Hawaiian island of Kauai lets SpaceX pick up and study the spacecraft while also keeping the safety. The ocean acts like a cushion, absorbing the force and ensuring a soft landing, preserving Starship's structure for quick recovery. This whole journey, including the flight over Indonesia and the re-entry near Hawaii, is expected to take around 90 minutes. During this time, experts will be closely monitoring every aspect of the flight to gather as much data as possible. This data will be crucial in making necessary adjustments and improvements for future launches. This was also the plan for the first Starship launch. However, the need for such data became even more evident when it ended up exploding just four minutes into the flight. Another fundamental reason SpaceX may be holding back on implementing mid-air catches is to preserve the safety of ground infrastructure. Given that Starship is still in its developmental and experimental phases, it's crucial to perform additional rigorous tests to perfect its functioning and align it more precisely with Musk's ambitious vision. The potential repercussions of a mid-air catch failure during initial launches could indeed be disastrous, leading to extensive damage to not only the launch pad, but also to any additional hardware and infrastructure surrounding it. Developing Mechazilla itself involves significant expenses. 
and exposing it to the uncertainties present in Starship's current development stage could be an economically unwise decision. With more than $3 billion already spent on the Starship project, a significant part of this investment is in the ground system, including the advanced setup like Mechazilla, focusing strongly on ensuring that every component functions flawlessly. You might be wondering, when is this launch finally going to happen? Just two weeks ago, we all thought we were on the verge of witnessing the liftoff in a matter of days. Our excitement peaked as SpaceX fully stacked the rocket. However, the excitement was short-lived, and they eventually had to destack it due to the FAA not granting the launch license and requiring 63 corrective actions to be undertaken. The Federal Aviation Administration, throwing a hint towards a possible launch date, mentioned on Wednesday that they might advance a launch license for the SpaceX Starship as early as next month. However, even after obtaining the license, SpaceX would require a separate environmental approval from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service before the actual launch can take place. There wasn't any clear indication from officials on how long that might take. Among the 63 corrective actions that SpaceX needs to address before the next launch, they have to make some changes to avoid leaks and fires, and also strengthen the launch pad. This is to ensure that debris and sand don't cause any issues during the launch. The anticipation continues as we all await the next steps in this revolutionary journey to the cosmos. For SpaceX, a company that doesn't receive government funding like NASA, the stakes are incredibly high. Musk acknowledged this intense pressure, highlighting how crucial the initial launches are. Before the first launch, he remarked, I would consider anything that does not result in the destruction of the launch mount itself to be a win. Musk's acknowledgement underscores the nature of these early launches and the meticulous precision required to safeguard the substantial investments made in infrastructure like Mechazilla. Each launch is a testament to SpaceX's resilient pursuit of innovation, a journey marred with uncertainties yet driven by an unwavering vision to advance space exploration all while maintaining the integrity of its groundbreaking infrastructures. Boosting the power of SpaceX's rockets to nearly 19 million pounds is also causing some worry. If things go south, the massive Super Heavy could mess up the launch pad really badly. There's another launch pad in Florida, but damaging these key spots highlights why playing it safe is super important, while Starship is still being worked on. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.